Hello crafty friends and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about how to get your card making mojo back when it seems to have up and gone. It happens to all of us, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Sometimes you just sit down with the intention of making something and your mind goes blank. Sometimes you just lose the will to craft completely and that's fine. Sometimes what you need to do is just take a break. But if you don't want to take a break, if you want to kind of push on through, because sometimes that helps, then I've got 10 things that might get your mojo back for you. One of the first things that I do when my mojo has disappeared is make card blanks and card panels. Sometimes I make them from scratch, sometimes I use pre-bought ones. I've got some here from Craft UK Limited. These are white linen textured. So normally I would just get say five, maybe 10 out of the pack and fold them. So they're ready to go when I want to make a card. And if I'm using shop-bought card blanks, I will sacrifice a few of the card blanks to make coordinating panels. So I took three cards, chopped them in half, and now I'm going to use a stitched rectangle die to cut out the coordinating panel. If I just want a smooth white cardstock card blank, I will often make my own, and this is how I do it. This is a piece of A4 smooth white card, and I will cut that lengthwise at about four and one eighth inches. I will then score that using my scoreboard at 15 centimeters, which is almost halfway or slightly over halfway, depending on which way you look at it. And I'll fold that in half and score it. And this will give me a 10 fold card. It's not perfectly matched up, but I will trim it down when it comes to making the actual card. And then I've got this, which I can cut a stitched rectangle panel or two from. So now when my mojo does show up, I've got some card blanks and card panels ready to rock and roll. So the second thing I do when I'm waiting for my mojo to return is die cut some blank shapes from bits of scrap. So scrap white cardstock, linen textured, hammered textured, smooth. I just take some basic shape dies, tape them down and run them through my die cutting machine. And this just gives me a little stash of pre-cut blank basic shapes that I can add color and texture to in whatever way I feel like it. So they're ready to go now and I can store those with my card blanks and card panels. So idea number three that I have for getting the crafty mojo going is to stamp and cut sentiments. So you've got a stack of sentiments ready to go. I have here some sentiment stamps and their coordinating dies. I'm going to do the die cutting first rather than the stamping. And we're going to use this as a jig. A jig is just something that holds something in place while you work on it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stamps in the holes in the jig and I'm going to have to put my head right over so I can line them up properly. Now we'll pick up the stamps. And what we can do now is pop the die cuts back in their little holes and take whatever ink you want to use, ink up your stamps and stamp it words and with any luck they should be exactly in the right place now carefully so as not to move the jig you can take those out don't move the stamps you can take scrap paper and cut lots and lots and lots of die cuts and then you can just put them back in the jig and stamp them so this is something that's a a great time saver so you could cut say 10 of each of these die cuts and then it would be really quick and easy now to stamp them perfectly And 
and in no time at all you can have a big stack of sentiments ready to go. If you haven't got sentiment stamps with coordinating dies you can just stamp your sentiments on card like that and then you could shuffle that up and re-stamp so you can stamp multiples like this leave enough space between your stamps so that you can either cut them out with scissors or you could find say a rectangle die that you've got in your stash that will allow you to cut them out so i could take some long scissors and carefully cut each one out could put a little angle at the end to add a bit of interest and if I wanted to make it look as if it had been die cut I can bevel the edges with an embossing tool and again very quickly I could have a pile of sentiments ready to go you could just not cut them out and leave them like this so you can cut them out how you want when you do get your mojo back. And you can always take some of the panels that you've made, some of the blank panels, and just stamp your sentiments straight on there for the addition of die cuts or stamping at a later date. So I can make this a happy birthday card and leave it at that for now and come back to this panel when I know what I want to do with it. So number four is very similar to number three. Instead of die cutting and stamping out your sentiments, you can do the same with images. We've got some flower dies and stamps. And again, I created a jig using card and the dies. And I'm going to get the flowers in exactly the right spot by putting my head right over and looking down. Now I can pick up my images, my stamps pop my die cuts in and then stamp and again if you haven't got coordinating dies you could fussy cut them out if you don't like fussy cutting you could just stamp your images straight onto card panels so they're ready to go when you want them these are silicone stamps so they prefer a solvent based or oil based ink pad so i'm going to use stays on because they're quite big images, I'll do them one at a time to hopefully get a good impression. And there you go, you've got some stamped and die cut images ready to go, ready to colour however you want. And you can just die cut a load more, pop them in the jig, stamp them, and again, they'll be perfect. And you can keep these jigs with your stamp and die sets because each time you use them, you just line the stamp back up in the right place and off you go again. You could even make these out of acetate if you wanted them to be permanent or mylar like a stencil. Number five on the list of things to do to help you get your mojo back is colour in some of your stamped images. Don't worry about what they're going to look like on a card. Don't even think about putting them on a card. Just colour them in for fun. Pick a few colours, a handful, just a rainbow maybe. And then go somewhere other than your usual crafty space, maybe just sit on the sofa or go to a coffee shop or a cafe. Move from the kitchen table where you normally craft to the dining table somewhere or just somewhere different. Take the pressure off and just enjoy colouring. This can give you a really good sense of encouragement and accomplishment. You're doing something creative but you're not putting any pressure on yourself to create a finished product. You're literally just colouring in, which is something we've done from a very young age and can be second nature almost. And it can feel just like playing. And I think that's a really important point is when you've got a problem with creative block or crafting block or no mojo, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And sometimes it's the pressure that causes the block. But we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves to create something beautiful and amazing, outstanding. But if we just play, if we do something we really enjoy, and for you that might be watercolouring or alcohol markering or blending or coloured penciling. If we do something we enjoy, if we have an attitude of play while we're doing it, 
and it'll just take the pressure off. Maybe those creative juices will start flowing. Maybe you'll finish colouring your flower and it will give you an idea for a layout on a card. And before you know it, you've made a card. If you want more ideas on how to colour stamped images, I do have a video about that. It's called 10 Ways to Colour Stamped Images, funnily enough. And I will leave a link to that in the video description below or beside, depending on what device you're on. And I'll leave a link up in the eye. Colouring can be a really mindful process. It can be relaxing. It can help you get into that flow state, that creative state. Just focus on what you're doing and when you get those intrusive thoughts that say this has to be perfect, you can just let them go, let go of expectations and just refocus and enjoy the moment. And just keep doing that until you get that flow state, get that mojo back up and running. On to idea number six and that is to create some of your own DIY patterned paper or mixed media backgrounds. This is something that really does get my juices flowing and it is like play to me. So I'm going to start by stamping on some watercolour paper and I'm going to use this stamp positioner purely because I cannot find my large acrylic block. It is in here somewhere but who knows where. I'm going to start with some chipped sapphire distress oxide. And stamp it in a few places on here. Not looking for perfect impressions, just want to get some texture down, some visual texture. Speaking of texture, this particular paper is very textured. It's quite lumpy, so probably not going to get perfect impressions anyway, because it's hard for the stamp to get the ink down into the divots in the paper. The next step that I usually take is to smash. Now I've used water reactive ink here and I'm going to add water on top so some of that will diffuse a bit. So I've put some shaded lilac distress oxide there, added water to turn it into a paint and I'll pick it up with my smusher and smush it on all over. And the trick with this is not to overthink it. Just flick through your stamps, pick one that you like the look of in the moment, just grab it. Choose two colours that are near each other on the colour wheel. So we've got a indigo and a violet -y colour. So they will mix, but they won't make mud. And if you want to know how to make a smusher, or you want some more smushing card ideas, then I do have a video and a playlist and again I'll link those in the eye and in the video description. And now I'm going to dry that with my hair dryer. And now to add a little bit more visual texture I'm going to do some stenciling. And I'll take that dark colour and add a few bits of stenciling here and there. Not over the whole lot and not pressing down too hard because I want it to be fairly gentle, not overpowering. And there's nothing wrong with just picking your favourite colours, your favourite stencils, your favourite stamps and just creating with them. They're your favourites for a reason so use them to get your mojo going again. And now I want to do some splattering and I'm going to use this gold. I could use the violet -y lilac colour or a pink or even a blue but quite often I like to add spattering in a contrasting colour. It just adds that little bit of extra visual interest as well as another colour and a bit of sparkle and shine. And now we have a mixed media piece and you can leave it like that and put it away and use it at a later date but again this can really boost your confidence, your sense of accomplishment can really encourage you because you've made something it doesn't have to be a finished card but you've made something and sometimes you'll look at a bit like this and go well that looks bizarre i don't know what i'm going to do with that 
but when you cut these things down they can take on a whole new life and maybe even suggest a card design to you i have been known to make a whole rainbow of these in a session i haven't felt like making a card but i've made these and then they've always come in handy afterwards and you might have noticed that each stage of this process began with the letter s we had stamp smush stencil and splatter and that's my little formula for creating background pieces mixed media pieces like this just stamp something smush something stencil something and splatter something and that brings me nicely on to idea number seven and that is to take scraps of pattern paper bits of backgrounds that you may or may not have just made or bits from your leftover backgrounds and bits stash however you store that mine are in this box and die cut some shapes from them get your basic shapes out again and die cut some basic shapes now i've got some hearts that i've cut from my background I just add a little bit of definition to the edge with some leftover ink and these can either be used straight away if you feel so inclined or you can put them away and rummage through them at a later date so creating these might be a step towards getting your mojo back but also having things like this ready to go might be a step to getting your mojo back as well as die cutting from your pattern paper and diy backgrounds you can die cut from glitter card stock foil card stock so this is my box not a box a pouch of scraps these are just little bits of leftover glitter and foil card stock and i have my sequin die here and a circle die and another circle die and i quite often just die cut bits out of these leftovers so that i've got them ready when i want them so let's do some silver sequins i'm going to take this down to the cardstock because i want to cut it and then i want to emboss it because there's some marks on the inside that need to be embossed to make these look like sequins so now i've got a whole host of silver sequins ready to go for maybe some christmas cards Idea number eight is to add texture to the blanks that you made earlier, the blanks that you've got sitting around. So I've got some circles here and I've popped them in this checkerboard embossing folder. Doesn't matter which way up because circles are the same all the way around. So that's a really easy shape to emboss and not worry about lining things up properly. But I do have a skinny embossing folder here and I'm going to emboss this card panel just down one side and I do have to line this up and to keep it in place while I run it through the embossing machine the die cut machine I'm going to stick it down with a bit of washi on the back because that doesn't matter if it makes a mark or if it tears that should hold it still more or less so there you have some embossed texturized circles which will look great on their own like that or inked up at a later time we've got a nice honeycomb design there hexagonal design and a panel that really just needs a sentiment and a die cut on it so you might find when you emboss something like this it automatically in your brain goes oh add this add that and then your mojo is going again if you don't fancy embossing folders you could also do some stenciling with some kind of texture paste this is cosmic shimmer sparkle texture paste it's glittery paste but you can get plain white paste or just metallic pastes you could take a card blank, you could take a card panel, you could take some die cuts and just add a little bit of texture paste. So I'm going to add a little bit in the opposite corners. When I take it away, I've now got a little basis for a die cut and a sentiment and a finished card. So that can be set aside to dry so you could do a few of those. And you could take some blank die cuts and add texture paste over the whole thing or just over one area and set that aside to dry. You could even add a little bit of texture paste onto the elements that you cut from your DIY backgrounds. 
one last way for now of adding texture with no other plan than adding texture is to heat emboss. So I've treated this with anti-static powder and I've got my Versamark sticky ink here and I'm just going to drag it down. I have no idea how much has gone in contact. It'll be a surprise. Obviously you could use stamps to add your ink, you could ink through stencils. If you're not entirely happy with your embossing, just before you heat it, take a paintbrush and nudge it around and then heat it with your heat tool. And you could leave it like that, I think that would make a nice background for a die cut and a sentiment or you could add ink you could smush over it you could blend over it you could stamp over it you could turn this into a bit of mixed media that you put in your box of backgrounds and bits ready to use at a later date it doesn't have to end in a card and with all these techniques I'm not saying you have to sit down and work your way through stages one to ten and end up with a finished card just when you feel you want to do something but you don't know what, pick one of the 10 things and have a go. And just play and let go of expectations. And by playing and preparing, you are making room for your mojo to come back. Okay, we are on to our penultimate idea, idea number nine. And that is, it might sound a bit boring, but actually I find it quite satisfying. Spruce up your supplies. So... When I'm using dies, when I finished die cutting, I throw them in here. So something I do of an evening often is just to go through this and put them all back in my die storage. And that can be fun if you've got some dies in here that have been in here for a while. It's a way of rediscovering some of your stash. Could be time to re-ink some ink pads. So some of my most used colours need re-inking fairly often although distress oxides don't need inking that often some of these i've had going for years but this might stimulate an idea playing with your favorite colors without any expectations might inspire you to do some stamping or blending or stenciling in that color yesterday i went through my use it or lose it washi tape box and i pulled out all the washi tapes that have only got a tiny little bit left on them and I put them on this metal ring. And today I've already used up two, so I can take those off. And I keep this hanging on the shelves next to my desk. And it just means I get through my washi tapes and don't have hundreds of half-used reels hanging around. But it's another non-creative way of playing with your products, sorting them out, organising them, finding old things that you've forgotten you had that might get those creative juices flowing again and things like this can be used for stamping or gel printing they're great little stamps really so that might again you might find something a found item a non-craft item that you think oh i could do something with that and off you go as well as putting away dies you can put away your stamps especially if you haven't been doing it for a while also stamps need a little bit of maintenance it's a good idea to clean them before you put them away so they're ready to go when you get them out again and cleaning your stamp positioners your acrylic blocks your stamping platforms is a good idea too what's the saying take care of your tools and your tools will take care of you so this has now got i think some stays on ink which is permanent waterproof ink so I'll just get a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth. This is rubbing alcohol and that will take off the stays on and keep my stamp platform door nice and clear so I can see through it when I need to. Always check when using any kind of solvent other than water. Always check on an inconspicuous area, as they say, first to make sure it doesn't mess up what you're cleaning. Glass is fine, there's very little that will uh, damage glass other than scratches, but with alcohol or acetone or any of those other cleaners you might want to use, just test them first. I have had acrylic blocks go cloudy in the past when I've put um, IPA on them, 
but again this is just a bit of stays on on this acrylic block that I could clean off you could put your photopolymer grip mat through the wash just clean it in some warm soapy water in the kitchen sink stencils are another thing that need a clean clean them before you put them away and they will be ready to go this was one I used a while ago and didn't put away because I hadn't cleaned it and now I've cleaned it it can go back in my stencil folder and again it's a low pressure might just possibly jog an idea activity scissors and tweezers may need a bit of maintenance sometimes they get a bit sticky from all the adhesives you can use ipa to get the adhesive off baby wipes work quite well as well if you've got pva glue on your tweezers you can just sit it in a little bit of water for a short amount of time and it will soften you can just wipe that off you could also sharpen your scissors using a knife sharpener but obviously be careful because it's sharp before we go on to our last thing i think it's worth saying that all of these things come under two headings really one is play let go of expectations just play with your tools and your supplies and prepare make room for your mojo by preparing things in advance so you're not starting from scratch every time you sit down You've got some things ready to play with to get your creative juices going. Right, now for our last one. And finally, we arrive at idea number 10, and that is to use some sort of card making or crafting prompts. I've created a document here which you can download for free from the link that I'm going to put in the description box of this video. And in this document, there is a list of 155 prompts. So we've got things like themes, birthday, anniversary, with sympathy. We've got things like use cardstock, black cardstock, colourful cardstock, craft cardstock, pattern white. Use scraps, try embossing powder, gilding flakes, different inks, different stamps different types of scraps, different kinds of markers, different tools, supplies, techniques, themes, and you can interpret these how you want. So how do you go about choosing which ones to use? Well, a fun way for me anyway, is to use a random number generator. So I have put random number generator into Google and it has come up with a whole load of websites that will generate random numbers for you, but Google itself has one here so what you need to do is there are 155 so you need to put minimum number one maximum 155 and then generate and it has picked 107 and that is pencils watercolor so I could do some drawing painting backgrounds what have you using watercolor pencils so what it does is it takes the choice away it gives you a boundary within which to work and that can be really helpful for getting past any kind of creative block so if i do it again i just press generate it said 110 this time which is printer so i could use my printer to print off some line drawings some digi stamps some sentiments some card sketches and use those let's try it again 131 it's like in the hundreds sponges so i could use a sponge to create a background i could create a sponge texture using inks let's try again 109 let's see if we can get it to go below 100 <laughs> yay 76 over here ink white so use some white ink on something you could spatter white ink you could stamp white ink you could swipe smush white ink the world's your oyster and 64 gloss so i could heat emboss with clear embossing powder i could use clear packing tape or contact paper i could use glossy accents or crystal glaze and one more just for good measure 77 inlay so i could do an inlay technique die cut and then inlay into the die cut and just to finish up i'm going to create two cards using the bits that i made during my mojo session i've got the hearts i'm going to pop those on some foam tape to give them a bit of lift 
I've got this flower. I'll also pop that on some tape. So I'm going to stick my flower on there. Now I can add some glue. That's far too much, as per usual. To the back of my sentiments. It's got a happy birthday. That could sit there, maybe, I think. And this one's definitely going to need a little bit of foam under it to support it. Now I can add these to my card blanks, but without even really trying to make a card, I've now made two cards using bits that I just created during a play session, really. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ideas of things you can do when your mojo has got up and gone. Just play and prepare and see where it takes you. Do share in the comments the kind of things you do when you want to get those creative juices flowing again. It'd be great to get lots of ideas in the comments for people. And I do hope you join me for another video here very soon. Right, thanks for watching. Bye for now.